Kelsey. Uh, thank you so much for having me on stage to talk to you and thank you to the conference organisers. Uh, it's lovely to be able to share the stage with so many amazing folks and talk about uh, relations. Uh, so as mentioned, uh, I work on GitHub, which has been mentioned. Uh, no, no, still problems. Oh, no, that one too far back. Yeah, this thing is slow. We'll be fine. Cool. <laughs> so uh, as mentioned, uh, I'm a student program manager in GitHub, which means that my job is mainly telling students to capitalise the H in GitHub. Um, but what I really do is help students all over the world get involved with open source communities and become part of the wider development community so they're able to take place in some of the communities and some of the uh, websites and other places that we've heard about today. So I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about how to engage students effectively, how to uh, find them where they are, why they're a good community to target, and how to utilise their advantages. And hopefully from that we'll draw not only some effective best practices to engage students with some motivation for doing so, but you'll also learn about some other ways uh, that engaging students can help shape your business and help shape you as individuals and how you work. Uh, so this uh, lovely picture here is uh, from a event over in the US from HackCon. It's a conference for student technical leaders. Uh, they have them over the world. We'll be talking a little bit about these people and about them. So the first reason uh, I think students are really great uh, is to talk, talk to and serve as a practitioner is partly because they are that very well defined audience. When we talk about students, we talk about a group of people that are very well understood. Matt in his keynote spoke about segmentation and how you can actually segment your audience, which is a really important thing to do. So I feel like as uh, cloud evangelists, we tend to say uh, we serve developers and kind of put all developers in this giant bucket and treat them all the same and ignore their individual needs and use cases. Whereas with students, we understand them very well. We know, for example, that they're typically between the age of 18 and 22 as an undergraduate. They're going to be confined to their semesters. So that gives us some idea of seasonality, which we'll talk about in a bit. We know that they're under resourced and can't necessarily pay out a huge amount for our software. And also, they may lack access to knowledge and to other resources that they need in order to get hold of our software. And this tells us a lot about what we can do to serve them. And also, most importantly, we know and understand their needs. And the needs of a student are very different from that of a developer. And often with a developer, we don't understand. Them. But with the needs of a student are very clear. They need to succeed and get a job, right? They're studying because they have some future they want to go to. And we develop relations people are experts in our field, I would hope. We pretend to be experts in our field. And we have some knowledge which we can share with them. We can help them get to their place. Because what they're looking for are novel skills. They need advantage in the marketplace. They need to take a step up. They need to be better than their peers in order to get a job. So you as developer evangelists from whichever company or developer relations people from whichever company, you're able to take not just what they're learning in the university to them, you're able to take your skills, your individual knowledge of your company's API, your company's product, or whichever framework your company uses, whichever language your company uses, which is going to be different, probably, to what they're learning in the university, and therefore it's going to be novel information that is exceedingly interesting and exceedingly useful to these students. Whereas when we talk about the needs of a developer, if I were to say, hey, I've got a PHP developer over here, what does that developer need? Not a clue. Like, there's so many different needs of a developer. Matt mentioned that developers want to build software. I would hope that's true in a lot of cases, but there's also, for example, developers who just want to collect their paycheck and get out of the way. They don't necessarily care about building good software, they just want to build it. Um, and lots of developers have lots of different needs. Whereas for students, their needs are very consistent. The other thing about uh, serving developers, part of the reason that developer relations professions exist is that developers really need more audience. We've spoken about this, and Matt spoke again. I mentioned Matt, so I think you're not used to a lot of good things today. Uh, in the panel, Matt spoke about uh, the fact that with developers, the flow of information is more equal. Uh, developers are doing us a favor when they use their platforms. Uh, when they use our platforms, sorry. The developers don't need to use our database or our API. They can find that information, they can find that product elsewhere. So there's almost an element of being jaded, this idea that uh, they've seen it all before, they've heard of the sales directory, they just want to get something that works and get out pretty quickly. <coughs> Students, in contrast, are energetic, they're unjaded, they're fresh-faced, they haven't experienced any of this world before, they don't yet have any preconceptions or negative ideas about the industry, they haven't yet been burned by the tech scene, and equally, they're willing to learn, and they have the time to learn. Students, uh, some may disagree with me on this, students have really ample so they make it absolutely fantastic. I don't have no idea. Is this a thing here? Some emoji translate? 
Uh, machines are really fantastic audience to address because of that. There's a couple of other things as well. So most importantly, students write for you. You address a student now, you make a student a fan of your brand now, two years down the line, they're going to be in a company. They're going to be a lead coming out of the company, coming towards you, because they've learned the skill, they've gone into that company, and what does a new graduate want to do? They want to show themselves, they want to prove themselves as a knowledgeable developer, they want to move up in the company, so they're going to uh, promote their knowledge. So if they have learned something novel from you, if they know something about your API, something about your platform, and an opportunity to use that comes up in the company, of course they're going to talk about your platform to their more senior developers, to their colleagues. So leveraging students as a limit, it's a fantastic long-term tactic to generate leads down the line. I mentioned ample free time. So this is, I think, one of the most important things. When we have a novel API or an SDK, of course we want people to build with it to be able to generate that content that's been spoken about with some of the other speakers. To generate content, we need good projects, we need good examples. Students are one of the best, and we all spoke about uh, open source and uh, having contributions to open source communities. Students are one of the best sources to get that from. I spoke to a open source maintainer last week, uh, I just mind mentioning this, uh, Robert Whitman. He's a contributor to many functional programming libraries and a contributor to the Swift language. And as a student, he's been doing this for quite a few years now, and he's been hired by Apple to go and work on the Swift compiler based on his work. And I spoke to him last week, and he said something to me, which I think really rings true, which is that when he was lower on in his educational career, when he was a high school student, he had much more time to open source, but he didn't have commitments, he didn't have responsibilities. And as students get older and graduate, and get jobs, raise families, you run out of time to engage with new projects and new learnings as much. So students as an audience don't have commitments, as many commitments. They don't have things they need to do, aside from exams and coursework. So they will, as a, if you target them and get them to build a new platform, you're more likely to get out of them. It might not be the same quality that you get from a professional developer, but in terms of getting interesting examples and interesting projects and open source contributions, you're going to get a lot from students once you have free time they have available. The other thing about students is you know where they are. Say I want to expand to a new region, I want to expand to Cameroon in Africa, and I'm a platform provider. I don't have to go searching around for the local meetups, I don't have to go find the community. I know where the community are, there's going to be students on the campus. You know where universities are, you can find them easily, get in touch with a student on that campus, they're more likely to know their local tech community because they're based in the area. So you can land on the campus, reach out to local students, get them on site with your platform and technology, and then roll out to the rest of the area from them. The other thing I mentioned this earlier but is uh, the idea of seasonality. So when you work with students, students have semesters. They start the year at some point in the UK in September, and they go through until uh, May. And they finish the year. They have exams, they have holidays. As a term relations person, this is super valuable. I'm sure if any of you are evangelists, uh, which I tell many of you are, you'll be used to this kind of feeling of always rushing from one conference to the next. You're always going to meet up, you're always going to events. You wonder when you'll get the time to sit down and plan new programs, plan new approaches. When you work with students, you get that built in because you know that the students are going to be active between September and December, then there's a two month break while they go on exams and Christmas. And then when, you, in, when it comes to spring, you know that students are going to be active between January up until May, when again they'll go away for exams, and then they'll go away for summer break. So that gives me, as a person who works with students, a great advantage in planning for the future. If I'm looking one year, two year, three years ahead, I know, okay, during these three month periods, I've got to be on the road and I'm meeting people. During these three month periods, I can be behind my desk making new content, making new programs, making new tools. So it gives you a rhythm to your year, and then it allows you to really organize your programs and your uh, perspective uh, approaches. So, we have learned about what students are, why they are, and why we want to approach them. So how do we go about engaging students? What are, what are the methods we should do? So I'm going to walk you through uh, what I think are three easy steps, and give a little bit of motivating example for each one via what we do at GitHub. So uh, before I do that, a little bit about GitHub student programs. Um, GitHub has been engaging students now for about five years. It started uh, by uh, a man called John Britton, uh, who joined the company about five years ago. And the first thing they did was uh, start a discount machine. Since then, the program has expanded to serve students, teachers, uh, through all different factors. We have a variety of programs, ranging from product discounts all the way through to teaching and training. And they kind of all layer together under one which we'll find out. So, step number one. Make your product available. You have an API, you have an SDK, you have a tool for developers. As we've, some of us have said already today, 
uh, students don't have the resources to go pay a monthly subscription fee. They don't have the ability to pay the $7 a month to get What is a small amount for a professional club or for a company is a very, very large amount for a student. So you have to make it available, uh, firstly financially. That tool has to be uh, essentially free. Students aren't going to want to pay any money, which sounds obvious. Um, but there's a couple of things that come along with this. So making your, the first reaction to making free for students is how do you validate that? Luckily, serving students, uh, a discount for serving students and free tool is very easy because most institutions in most countries will grant their students a institutional email address. For example, in the UK, every student gets a .ac.uk email address. In America, every student gets a .edu email address. So if you know that certain domains belong to certain universities and certain universities give their students email addresses, you can validate based on that. Secondly, most students will get given an issue ID card. So if you need additional proof that they are a student, you can ask for their student ID card to get the photo. So at GitHub, we actually run a validation program, student supplier and student developer pack, which I'll be quite known. Um, and we validate that they are a student before we give them a discount. There are also services that do this. Uh, the most, I don't know if it's serviceable here, I expect this, but the most popular one is something called Unidays. Unidays is a service for verifying that a student is a student, so you can apply a discount to them, and it works in most countries in the world. So it fraud and validation is something we're concerned about with serving free software to students, so we're definitely encouraged to tackle that. But the more important way of making it available is in terms of effort. Remember uh, what we know about students. We know that they're young, we know that they're early on in their careers. If, depending on which academic year they're in, we know a lot about their expertise level. If you're providing your API or your SDK with the client wrappers for your API through the latest uh, package manager for JavaScript, which we all know changes every week. And if you're providing your API through Yarn, for example, a student's not going to be learning about Yarn in the course. They're not going to be learning about NPM in the course. So if you're providing your client libraries with the latest and greatest package manager, it's inherently inaccessible to students because they need to learn about the tools before they can get to your thing. So make it available through old school methods. Allow them to go and download uh, the, jobs, the JavaScript file from your website. Allow them access to a CDN. Make sure that your tools are as simple and easy to access as possible. Your documentation and your client libraries do not work until a first year computer science undergraduate has used them and built something with them. So make it as simple and as low effort as possible to get involved in your software. Uh, so as mentioned, the GitHub Student Developer Pack. So the GitHub Student Developer Pack goes with it start. <coughs> Uh, we recognize that giving uh, students access, free access to GitHub doesn't do a lot. If I give a student a free GitHub account, so I've given them a place to put their software, uh, their private software, free, what do they do with that? A student's at a stage in their career where they don't have an obvious product to go put into their GitHub. They don't have a private code that they're working with that they need to go put into their GitHub account. So we went a bit further, we made the student further path, but we went out to other companies, other partners like Microsoft, Amazon, DigitalOcean, AMG, the list goes on and on and on, and we said to them, hey, we're giving free software to students to help them learn, help them grow as people, do you want to come on that journey with us? And we managed to get over $12,000 worth of free software in this pack that we give to students. So when we give uh, free GitHub to students, we don't just give them free GitHub, we say to them, hey, here's free GitHub, and here's $200 of Amazon Web Services credit. Here's a free domain name from Namecheap, and here's DNS services. Go build that web app you want to build. Oh, wait, you don't know how to build a web app. Well, here's also access to Udacity for a free nano degree. So they get the full package when they sign up to get a student developer pack, which for us, we really help to retention. We don't just get students signing up to GitHub going, oh, I've got private repositories making one project and leaving it. They come to GitHub, they make a project, they actually go and learn something about code, they go and sign up for an offer and redeem those offers for those services, they write some code, and then they come back to GitHub time and time again because they've got real code and real projects there. So we can provide a service for students, don't just make it free and say, cool, job done, my software is free, students can use it now. Make sure there's a story to tell there and a way for students to actually use your software. Uh, think about the life stage they're in, the experience level, about what they need from you to be successful and gain that kind of information. So step number two, you've made your software free, you've made it easy to access, you Make sure that the documentation is tipped up and students can read it. How do you get it to them? Where do you find students? As you can see, students do come to professional events. We had a couple of here, Ellen. Um, but more than that, students are a great target because they have that own cultures and their own events. You may have seen on my photo at the beginning that I had a, an MLH thing in the corner. Um, that's an organization called Major League Hacking, which we call them. But Major League Hacking comes from the student hackathon scene. 
This is a global movement uh, that looked out tens of thousands of students now participating in, where they go and do hackathons. Uh, if you haven't heard of a hackathon, it's essentially a, a creative marathon. You get together for a weekend, for two days, and you code in teams, and at the end of that, you have a you have a real thing that you've built, and you've met some sponsors, you've met some people, you've worked together on some software. And this is really probably taken to you by storm, because it's a great way, it's a great outlet uh, for their skills, they're learning in their degree, they're able to go and apply those to real projects and work with their peers. And equally, it's a great way to meet people from industry, because lots of companies get involved in sponsoring. So hackathons are sweeping everywhere, I'll tell you some ways you can find some in China. Um, but the neat thing about hackathons is they let you get face to face with people. If you think of a a careers fair or other ways you typically engage students, you're going to be standing behind your booth, a student's going to come to your school, you're going to talk to them for 20, 30 seconds, give them a flyer, they're going to take your free gifts and they're going to walk on. When you go to a hackathon, you're locked in the same room with these people for 24 hours. You're in a room with hundreds of people who are passionate about the same topics you're passionate about, and that's not an environment that exists in any other industry. That only exists in technology. So it's a great platform to meet these people and actually really recognize what their challenges are and how your platform applies to them. And it's a great place to get those prototypes and those projects built. And also, student hackathon organizers um, are a very, very special group of people. Uh, these are some of the students we work with in the UK. Uh, this is uh, Abdul, Matt, and Yuvesh. They are all student leaders in their US and European organization. Uh, they help students organize hackathons. They give them all the knowledge they need. And for us, that's great because major league hackings do uh, hundreds of events in a single year. They do have they they have about fifty thousand students attend their hackathons every year. There's more hackathons than I could ever attend as someone in GitHub. Uh, in a busy weekend, they have fifteen hackathons on one weekend. So as a company, I can never get people to all those destinations. But major league hacking have reps at every single one of those events. So as you can see here, we sponsor major league hack hacking to distribute the student development pack. At every single student hackathon, a major league hacking rep gets up on the stage and tells the students about the student development pack. So we're able to scale our programs in a really simple way. Um, and there are organizations like this in China as well. Recently, a uh, student from Zing started up uh, HackX, which is doing the exact same thing. They're doing hackathons uh, all over China. Um, I attended this one in Shanghai a long ago. Uh, amazing event, the students were super engaged. If you are interested in acting out any of what I'm speaking about today, definitely go find HackX. It's at hackx.org. Really, really great organization. Um, the tip of free and low on time, so I'll get to the last one. Um, the most important thing is I'm going to mention leveraging student leaders as uh, your champions on the ground. Turning local leaders into advocates is the number one way to learn you can do. So in GitHub, we call this the Campus Network Program. And the idea behind that is to support and grow student leaders. We identify that students want to exceed, excel in their jobs and their careers, and that they need more skills to do that. So we identify the ones who are really passionate about supporting their peers, about providing a good community for them to grow. And we give them the skills they need to do that. We take them through weeks of training, we provide them with special swag, we make them feel like GitHub cares about them, because <coughs> we do. And we give them the skills they need to better help their peers, and they in turn help us do that. So the GitHub Campus experts, uh, we have currently 50 of them, uh, but after uh, a month, one month, so 28 days after they finish training, they have done 40 events in seven countries. They're just ridiculous. They're, they work so fast. We have them all over the world in places that we in places where we have no GitHub. We have them organising thousand people hackathons in India. Uh, they give talks that their lecturers have asked them to do on Git and GitHub technologies. Um, they're organising diversity conferences. This is three of our campus experts having organised the Women in Tech event in Nottingham. Uh, they're giving talks in uh, introducing the uh, students to local open source leaders. This is Peter. Uh, he runs the project CDNJS. He's a second year student at university and he also runs one of the biggest jobs with open source projects. And he's a leader that we've trained to deliver talks at Campus Sound. But the most important thing about this program, the most important thing about building local advocates, is don't make it about your company. GitHub doesn't make it about us. We're not training these students to be slaves. We're not training them to be unpaid evangelists. We're training them to help their peers and help their communities. We're training them to build their future. And in return, they see us as human beings, as people who care about them. And they're more willing to go out of their way to help us out.
And I think one of the key takeaways you can take away from being an evangelist today is that it's about presenting an authentic and human face to your community, to the people you want to serve. And by leveraging an uh, advocate like this and getting the authentic people and skills they need to authentically represent your community, you really serve that purpose. So those are the three things I would recommend if you have any questions around for us today. Um, but thank you, I've been Joe Nash. Um, we've had a talk about GitHub in general. Um, and I have stickers, please come grab them. If you have any questions, let me know.